I guarantee you, you will understand exactly how to understand and decode all those numbers on your bill. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to decode something that, and I'm not joking here, majority of homeowners all around the world get wrong. So imagine you have this brand new, amazing solar system and you get your first electrical bill and you're like, well, shit, this thing ain't working. You call your solar installer upset and you ask, what is wrong with my solar system? Why does my bill say I only generated 500 kilowatt hours, but my solar app is showing 1000 kilowatt hours? Is the utility company screwing you over? Or maybe the solar system isn't working properly. Today, we will review how to properly understand your solar billing. We'll go over how to compare it to your solar production, how to understand where all these numbers are coming from. And I will do this based on one of my personal solar systems. I don't have that many, don't get excited. We will go over two billing cycles, one in the spring and one in summer. And at the end of this video, I guarantee you, you will understand exactly how to understand and decode all those numbers on your bill. And you will also know if something is in fact wrong with your solar system. Let's get started. Now, keep in mind that the system we will review today does not have batteries. It's a standalone grid tied solar system. Batteries do not complicate it that much more, but I will prepare a separate dedicated video for those homeowners who have batteries. So make sure to subscribe not to miss that video. Now let's get started with the basics. When you go solar, now you have two sources of power, your solar system and your utility company. Now, most homeowners choose to stay grid tied because going off grid is extremely expensive and having that utility there as your backup power source at night or during rainy days is actually very important and fairly cheap. So the goal here is to be as independent as possible and generate as much as you can from your solar panel. Your solar system consists of the panels and a string or a microinverter system and that does that DC to AC conversion. Now your panels generate electricity on the roof. Then the inverter, whichever one you have, converts that power to that usable AC that then first feeds your home and this is the most crucial part so all that generation that starts on the roof first goes to your home's electrical system this is going to be that production that you see on your monitoring app the solar power generated by the solar panels first feeds your home and if and only if your home doesn't need all that power at the time of production, it then spits it out through the meter. So the meter only shows you the excess that was generated, but did not used. Now there's no way for the meter to know exactly what your total production was. Now there could be some cases around the world and in America as well, where a utility company will actually require you to add an extra solar meter that would give you that data. But in in majority of cases you only have one utility meter outside of your home and that utility meter only knows what it gets so let's use easy numbers here you generated 21 kilowatt hours today and your home only needed 10 of that so the difference that 10 kilowatt hours flew through the meter and the utility company recorded the excess 11 kilowatt hours. Then at nine, let's say your home needed extra five kilowatt hours. So now you pull that from your utility company, that secondary source of power. Then in the morning, the cycle begins again. And then at the end of the billing cycle, the utility company will show you how much power they sold to you. That will usually be shown as um, charges or delivered power and that's usually your nighttime usage or usage during the cloudy days when solar is just not able to generate enough power then they will also show you how much they bought from you and this is going to be in form of credits that's your excess solar production now the biggest piece of the puzzle is here to understand how much your home actually uses. So now going back to those easy numbers, let's say you did generate 20 kilowatt hours today and you used 
12 kilowatt hours directly. Then at night, again, you needed five kilowatt hours. So your total consumption for that day will be? Pause the video and comment down below if you know. <laughs> 12 from solar and five from utility. So 17 kilowatt hours total of your home total consumption. Now let's look at simple bill and go over that together. Oh, and before I forget, if you do find this video helpful or find or have any feedback for me or tips, please comment down below. And I try to read all the comments and I try to also respond to all of them. And I appreciate it so much when you can show me your support by subscribing to the channel. So if you can do that, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much. Now back to the video. So let's start with a tip. <laughs> When you go solar and you switch to a solar buyback plan, ask your utility provider to change your billing cycle from first to the last of the month. I personally need to do that for my own system because you'll see why it'll make much easier math numbers. <laughs> so my billing cycle is 15th through 15th of the month. And I will start with my March bill. So we will be looking for three figures. A our total production from the solar system monitoring app, B, our charges from the utility company, and C, our credits from the utility company. The billing cycle, as you can see on my bill, is March 15th through April 16th. So before we look at the bill, let's quickly take a look at what my solar system generated during that period of time. And I will just have to download the data for that timeline, or you can look at the graph and add up the days one by one. So now let's review our numbers. During that time, I generated 1,268 kilowatt hours. On my bill, you can see that I sold to the utility 911 kilowatt hours. So this means that the big portion of my solar generation was not used at the time of the production. Now, in order to know what my home used during that time, we have to simply deduct 911 from 1268. This is that direct usage from solar and that comes out to 357 kilowatt hours. Now on top of that, I also bought 392 kilowatt hours from the utility. That's my nighttime usage or usage when solar is not keeping up. Now in order to know how much my home used in total, I have to add the usage from solar and the usage from the utility company and that comes out to 749 kilowatt hours. So that month, my home used 749 kilowatt hours and I generated more than that, so my bill was negative. Now, depending on your buyback, that bill might look totally different. For me, on everything I buy from the utility, I also pay an extra delivery charges to Encore, so it's not a true one-to-one. -one. Now, ideally, and I should listen to this, I should use more power during the day so that I sell less to my provider and then basically use less at night so always doing laundry during the day during those sunshine hours dishwasher even starting cooling off the home faster before the sun goes down charging ev etc see what i'm doing here I'm, I'm giving myself tips that i should be listening to as well <laughs> now does this make sense so if so great if not let's do one more bill and see if we can get there and make sure that you understand all of that and let's see how summer affects those bills so let's look at july so by that time, I used all my credits that I built up and I got a $146 bill. Now this billing cycle was actually a few days shorter than the other one and my total production for that billing period was 1161 kilowatt hours. So let's review. Based on the bill, I've been charged for 1,082 kilowatt hours of usage. This is RB. And then out of that total production, we only sold excess of 394 kilowatt hours. So like this month, you can see that we used way more power directly from solar. So based on those numbers, let's get the direct usage from solar. 1161 minus 394 is... 767. Now this is our direct solar consumption. Now then we also bought 1,082 from the grid. So our overall usage that month was 1,849 kilowatt hours. That's more than double of what we use in the spring. Now I will make the Excel downloadable, downloadable, 
That way, yeah, I will make it easy for you to download. That way you can just input your billing information and I'll spit out all the total usage and all those numbers for you. Now, understanding your usage and how it all works is so important because that way you can use your solar system to its most advantage. Now, some customers will have more family over and they don't necessarily check their app to see if their solar production or if their solar system is working and then they get a high electric bill and they immediately think that the solar is not working or something is not right. Now you can check it for yourself before you have to make that call to your installer. What you can do is also look at individual months. So let's say look at August 2023 compared to August 2024. Compare your overall production for that time period. Then look at how much power you bought that month, how much extra power you bought, bought or how much extra you sold. And you can understand all those numbers. And you don't even have to know how many panels I have, what kind of system size I have, right? You can understand how all of it works together. Now, a lot of newer system come with what's called a CT, current transformers, and those will be added to your electrical system to measure those numbers and do the math for you. Now, this option is also available as an add-on in form of like a solar sense or Emporia monitoring device. I will link that in the description below. You can easily get them on Amazon for a few hundred dollars, even like less than 200, and you can install it Ideally hire someone to do it, but a lot of people can do it themselves. And then you can understand your usage and it can also help you lower your actual consumption. Now for those systems that are older and let's say you don't even have a monitoring app, you can add a third party option like those that I mentioned for a very little cost to check on your system. To make sure that you understand all of it in one sentence, your utility, your bill, does not know the full story. It only sees what it gets as access or, or what it sells to you directly. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful, not confusing. Please let me know if you understand it now or if you did from the get-go or maybe this was a terrible way of explaining it. I'll definitely be working on more content, especially for those that have battery systems and how that plays into that. So make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one.